Lucky here. It's the Pat and JT Podcast. Pat and JT Podcast. Um, okay, a few episodes back. We were talking, I don't even know what what brought this up, and somehow um, my conversation, I said something about body language, with something that Pat had said. I don't remember. And I can't remember why, but then all of a sudden I got really smart, and I started telling you all kinds of things about what's true and what's not true about body language, and then I realized I don't know anything I'm talking about, and maybe we should find an expert. Right. And so we did. Is what This is the weirdest thing, guys. You know how they say when you throw something out into the universe, it, it, it all of a sudden it manifests and things just start happening. You're, you're looking for something, you throw an idea out, and then lo and behold, there it is. And so I, I simply Googled body language expert Omaha, and a name pops up, and her name is Ann Washburn, and she's going to be in Omaha July. Ironically, usually, so usually with was, us, we look for stuff, and it's like, oh, we just missed it, it like a week ago. ago. I know, right? And yeah. so it was on July 30th was when you were in town for a performance or for a presentation. And I reached out to the people that were in charge of this. So at least who I, I tried to find out who, who, how do I get a hold of her? What am I going to do? And so Ann Washburn is in the studio with us. Welcome Hi, to Omaha. Thank you. So, so, so everybody, I'm, I'm, this is so fun because there's just been so many, it's funny, a lot of uh, misunderstandings, uh, assumptions, um, crossed wires, and it all turned out wonderful. Let, let's just call it serendipity. Okay, right? I'll go with that. I, I like will. That. So just so everybody knows, we're actually recording this on the 30th of July because this evening you're going to have a presentation yes. here in Omaha. Yes. And I would love to know, um, first off, what is bringing you to Omaha? Because then we're going to get into the, the miscommunications and crossed wires because it's hilarious. Oh, yeah. It's awesome because um, a few months ago, Vicki scheduled me to come out here because she's been to many of our classes in Salt Lake City. We are a education company and we teach seminars, we teach classes both online and live. And she's come out to Utah several times for our classes. So, so, so Vicki is, uh, she's just a fan of yours and a fan of the presentations yes. from Omaha. Yep. And she's really quiet sitting in the corner right now. She yes. said she will not grab the microphone. <laughs> and so why is Vicki having this presentation or, or had the presentation on July 30th? Well, because, so let me give you a little background of where my come from is for body language. You bet. Because when it comes to body language, and this is what I talk about in my TED Talk that I they had me do, is that body language is the key to our subconscious programming because our subconscious programming is what really runs our life everything that's going on in our subconscious that's our default and if we can upgrade that default we can change the results we have in our life and we we at three key elements we teach all of these kinds of things of communication body language upgrading and she's been to many of these classes and had amazing results so she's mm-hmm. like, people in Nebraska need this. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't ever remember hearing of a body language expert being here in town, um, and and I'm fascinated by it too because I think unknowingly a lot of times you don't even realize you're sabotaging yourself Absolutely. when you're trying to excel. You're right. trying to move forward, and you're like, why does it keep screwing up? Why exactly. do why do they not understand what I'm trying to say? Exactly, and yep. it's something that you're doing, but you just don't realize it. Right. And, wow. and that is, wow. you know, Vicki and I, as we were driving here from the airport, we were having this conversation about how your greatest pain point is becomes the passion in your life. In other words, something that you had to overcome becomes something you want to teach people around you. And for me, so I was telling you earlier that my background is in flight simulation and explosives. Don't Which is pretty, Don't. probably the most awesome job Isn't title cool? ever. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Because I... So, what, what did you do in your former life? And what, 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 or what did you want to do before you got into body language? Well, you know, that's kind of a funny story. Because back in high school... I realized I didn't like people very much. <laughs> people were really hard to get along with. Yeah. And you learned that early on. It took me about 45 years to learn that one. Yeah. You're a fast learner. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I figured out it a little earlier. We, yeah. we both, just a little sidebar, we're both Sagittarius. Oh, me it's, too. Seriously. Yes. So you're a doormat as well? Oh See, it's my like God. people yeah. pleaser. So oh my God. Yeah. Okay. That, Thank you. Okay, no that, wonder we're, okay. no wonder we had crazy. to be here together. <laughs> crazy. Okay. So you, you figured it out. You, yeah. So okay. So my plan was, since I didn't like the people very much, I was just going to leave high school and go to the nearest college and see if they would take me instead. And they're like, (laughs) okay. All right. So I went up there to the registration office and they're like, sure, we'll take you. But what are you majoring in? 
And I'm like, major? I didn't know I had to have a major. I just didn't wanted to come to college. Yeah. So I'm like, think on your feet, Anne. What are you going to do? Oh, why am I coming to college? To date the boys. That's why. <laughs> Isn't that why you go to college? <laughs> so, he, I, so I looked at him and I said, what majors do you have with no girls in them? And he goes, no girls? And I said, yeah, I don't want the competition. Good thinking. I know. You're a smart right? kid. Uh-huh. So he said, well, in that case, because this was a little while ago, so they had books back then. So he opens this book and he turns the pages and he says, well, how about you be an engineer? Yeah. And I looked at him and I said, no, thank you. I do not want to drive trains. <laughs> there you go. Because <laughs> that's what engineers did. Right. Yeah. And, exactly. And But then he goes, Ann, look, in our program, there's no trains and very few girls. Mm-hmm. And I said, sweet, sign me up. Let's do it. Yep. So I went through school in mechanical engineering. And it's true. There aren't very many girls. I know because they called me into the dean's office one year and said, we've elected you woman of the year for the department. Like how many, Huge honor, right? How many uh, other and I'm running? like, <laughs> and they're like, we haven't had a woman of the year for a while. <laughs> but now. That's, that's awesome. awesome. That is awesome. I love it. So that's, and so then when I graduated, I went to work in military defense explosives so i worked in i i'm pretty sure that's it's fascinating all de- though declassified now and i can talk yeah. about it <laughs> but it, i worked with slurry explosives and what it was on tank defense projects oh my god i don't think i've ever told anybody that that's before. pretty awesome oh my god, god, that's cool. that's so cool yeah. and then i went to flight simulation and worked on multi-million dollar flight simulators oh my gosh but i still found people yeah. And I didn't like people. Yeah. So I was still struggling with the whole people thing. And the why. Yeah. Yeah. And then I had kids. And now I had to go back to school where I'd left the school and interact with the parents and the teachers again. And I didn't get along with them. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, what is wrong with this planet? Everybody's so mean. Uh huh. And my husband, one day, he looks at me and he goes, Anne, do you really think it's all of them that have the problem? <laughs> I'm like, ooh, ooh, uh, you're mean too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where my interest in body language actually came from. Was, Trying to figure out what message you were putting out that well, was I causing. Didn't even, I didn't even you know. You probably didn't even think of it in those terms. I didn't even yeah. know that yet, Jill. I really yeah. didn't. But I had gotten online and I'd found a body language show, like the one I'm doing here in Omaha tonight. Mm-hmm. And I signed my husband up for it. <laughs> I wasn't going to go. There'd be people That's there. So <laughs> but then he could bring back kind of reconnaissance. Exactly. Right? Yeah. He could bring back the information. Recon, yeah. There you go. Yeah. But instead, he comes back and he goes, Ann, I signed you up for a three-day class. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm going now to camp. what am I going to do? <laughs> and it was called Master Your Influence. So I went to this Master Your Influence class, and I got really clear on one thing. And that is that when your words and your body language don't match, people discount what you say to believe what they see. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's my piece. And that's when I started cluing in that I'm sending out messages that's teaching people how to treat me. But how do we know yeah. what message that we're picking up from whatever your body language is? Like how, how would I know if you having your hand flat on the table is a sign, are you sitting there like that? How would I know that? I think you just subconsciously get turned off by it. Do don't, you? Don't, don't you? I mean, people don't discernibly, like people aren't consciously saying, oh, that the way she moves or the way she's looking at me funny or the way she tipped her head. I don't know if you pick up those signals consciously. It's definitely subconscious. We are wired, we are wired as a protection mechanism to pick up on people's body language. But if you ask people what did they say with their body language, they don't know. It they so we didn't like it. They describe it as a feeling. It just didn't feel right. Like if somebody comes up and you say, "But they, that was just kind. Of, they're kind of creepy. They're kind, and they didn't really do anything wrong. Yeah. It's just a, a vibe you picked up. Yeah, it was yeah. just Maybe their body language, the way they carried themselves. We've said yes. that before, though. Yeah. You know, around people, and I can think of people. It, it not. I'm not going to name names or specific places, but it's just like you <laughs> know when they walked in the room, you were just like, oh, <clears throat> creeped out. You know, or yeah. or really <clears throat> uncomfortable right. or. There's no way they're telling the truth. Yeah. They're lying All to me of those things. Yeah. And, and we pick up on it subconsciously, but we don't know what's going on consciously. But the real, the real uh, huge payday of understanding body language is understanding your own messages that you're sending out. 
because we already pick up on other people's messages. And that's the funny thing is people are always looking for how can I understand other people's body language? Well, start with your own. That's true. Because if you look yeah. at your own body language, now you know what messages you're sending out and what people are picking up on that cause them to treat you the way they do. Okay, so let me just ask you this because okay. so many thoughts go through my head when you're talking about all this. I know, it's a big it's, subject. It's a big thing because it, it affects, I can think of so many conversations like, um, well, that's just the kind of guy she attracts. Yes. And she's like, why do I always get the bad guys? Or why do all the guys that I date always cheat on me? Or why, you know, why the guy saying, you know, why am I always with somebody that's just so high maintenance? Or why am I always with, they're attracting that yep. somehow, pulling that into their world. Yeah. And it starts with those programs that we have inside of us. Our, and instead of programs, let's call it our belief system. We believe at a subconscious level that we aren't valuable enough to attract somebody else. Hmm. And the thing is, is that if you tell somebody you need to stop thinking that, they'll go, oh, okay. Right, mm -hmm. they don't live, how? right, they don't well, have to. Then, yeah, we don't ever talk about how. And, and so that's why they had me do this TED Talk was because this is the interrupt in that programming. Because we have, we have so many thoughts that go through our head. We have so many pieces of information. Consciously, consciously we have just a fraction of the number that go through our subconscious. Mm -hmm. So our subconscious is handling about 40 million pieces of information every single second. 40 million. Mm -hmm. we, can't, we, can, we can't even sift through that. And so our brains behave like a computer. And what that means is they have to have programs to know how to sort through the data. Makes sense. Totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we have these programs, and based on those programs, what information comes to our conscious mind is going to be based on that programming. Well, the interesting thing is, and this is one of the things I'll teach tonight, is that our, we, on average, can only speak about 150 words a minute but our subconscious tries to give us about 600 words a minute to say. I, I, that happens to me every day. Stumbling yeah, across. I, absolutely. Right. I'm like, I've got, I've got words coming out and they're not in the right order and I'm just, I'm, I, okay, Where hold did on. That We're just from? overflowing. It's <laughs> like, right. ah. And so those other words come out in our body language. Oh. oh, that's interesting. Well, it's really interesting when you think about, don't you wish some people filtered their words better? Yes. Yeah. And it's like, and sometimes you say words and you're like, oh, I shouldn't say this one. And so we hold it back, but the message comes out in our body language. So we need wow. to know how and to And body language doesn't that. always have to be negative, right? It, it can be, po it's positive also. Like your body Absolutely. language can be, uh, being make people feel more comfortable around you. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily turnoffs. Oh, absolutely. That's been one thing that I've loved learning how to do is to help people be comfortable around me. Because before my body language, because I believed ahead of time that people were going to be mean, <laughs> that I didn't want to be around them, I sent off defensive messages. Mm -hmm. So you can watch my TED talk and I show right there on stage that I, I would fold my arms a lot before I walked into a place. Not that, okay, I got to tell you this too. Mm -hmm. Every body language move does not mean just one thing. So folding arms doesn't always mean defensive. It can mean thinking. It can mean pondering. It can mm -hmm. mean lots of things. But you, so you just have to know that just like it's words in a language. The whole, yes. right? Right. One, one word in context mm -hmm. means one thing, but just stand alone means it's another. It's still a language. Yeah. So body language is a language. Yeah. So with that prefaced, I, I would fold my arms before I even went into a room because I was already worried about what kind of treatment I was going to get. Mm -hmm. Protective. Exactly. Your and shield. so now mm -hmm. I'm sending off this message, you're hurting me. So now people around me are going, well, why would you get the message I'm hurting you? I'm so they're defensive, you. right, instantly. So they become That's defensive. That's crazy. And so this is why I would actually get in arguments and fights with people. And it was your fault. The Basically, you're, it was your body language. <laughs> it was your fault. Your husband was right. We got to give some credit to a dude when he's right every once in a while. Your husband was right. I am so going to tell him you said that. Yes, he, you have to. You are going to be his new best yes, friend. Yes, <laughs> he was right. He was right. He was. It's just that I didn't know how. I didn't yeah. know how I was doing that. So like women with RBF. Resting oh, B face, no, right? Yeah. You know what that oh, is, right? Rest, yeah. So that's they that's, can't that's, help that's it. right. I, well, I some of them, now. some of them just have like the scowl, and like, and they're yeah. not. It's just they could relax and just 
They don't even have their arms crossed sometimes. Right. No. You just it's, ask yeah. them what's wrong, and they're like, nothing's wrong. Nothing's I'm fine. Wrong. Yeah. I'm in a great mood. What's yeah. wrong with you? Uh-huh. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. This is my good mood. Come yeah. on. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is my happy face. But there, there are also those people that walk into a room and instantly lift the room. Exactly. Um, I'm thinking of our buddy Andy is mm-hmm. one of them. Uh, mm-hmm. He's one of those guys, and he, he walks in a room, and he instantly is just, oh. You just feel better. Breath of fresh air. Yeah. And he doesn't even have to really say a lot. He mm-hmm. just kind of, he just sitting there and he just is. And, and he's happy and he, you can feel it coming off yes. of him. And you know why? Because he has upgraded a lot of the programming in his subconscious. So the body language comes out naturally upgraded. Interesting. Because here's the cool thing. You can either upgrade the programming so that your body language changes, Mm -hmm. or you can interrupt the body language and the program will have to change. So is that kind of like fake it till you make it kind of deal? It is. It's one of those, you know what I mean? But in science, there's a name for it. It's called cognitive dissonance. Okay, I did not know that those two things went together. I did not know that's what that meant, really. Yeah. And, and, And that's just a disruption. Mm-hmm. Cognitive dissonance basically states that your brain cannot hold on to two conflicting ideas at the same time. One of them has to give. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're, when you're really disturbed or you're really worried and anxious about something, your brain's trying to decide which one do I keep, which one do I get rid of. And your body language can reinforce the good program or the negative program so that we can choose which yeah. one that we are going to will reinforce right right because I, I can think of growing up you know it was just just put a smile on your face and go for it mm-hmm. don't worry about it just put a smile it'll come put a smile on your face and you do it and it would slowly turn the tide would slowly turn you got to believe it's going to happen yep and it would slowly turn even though you had that nine little feeling it's like well we're not going to go down that road right we're going to go down this road but the body language can help us yeah. feel it faster yeah because so we have wow. lots of terms in in english that have to do with body language like you've heard of the afternoon slump yeah well the afternoon slump if you think about it it's shoulders are down chin is down where our our posture is down it's like gravity has pulled down on us and if you let yourself i mean even like everybody listening to us right now you can try it drop your shoulders drop your chin drop your posture and then think about how does that feel tired heavy tired heavy Mm -hmm. exactly Now do the opposite. You put your shoulders up, put your chin up, Mm -hmm. even lift the corners of your mouth. And now, how does it feel? You do feel lighter. I'm still tired, though. (laughs) You can still be tired. (laughs) You're always tired. I'm always tired, but I feel like you you just feel better. Like it's like you're uh, attracting. You're putting out what you want to attract. Okay, I love that word that you just used there, Pat, because Mm -hmm. it is very, body language is very, you use the word attracting. It can also be very pushing. Mm-hmm. It can be either Push one. Pull. Yeah. It can yeah. be both. And the funny thing is, is that I see so many people. If you want to watch body language, just give somebody a compliment. Oh my gosh, that's the truth. Because when you give them a compliment, they use body language. Yeah, they, it's like they, people don't know how to handle someone just just taking a compliment and saying thank you. No, they, they, they can't handle it. They can't. And so they'll they sometimes they'll say thank you while they're pushing it away with their hand. They'll go oh. Thank, thank you. you. I can just like, see that. Just push away. Yeah. Oh, just kind of right? like dismissing like, oh, thank you. Stop it. You know, that kind of thing. Because yeah. they don't, don't keep doing that. But, but, but body yeah. language is a bigger piece of our communication than our words. Not that, not that we, let me explain it this way. We, use, we can't just not use words. But words are a very small percentage of our overall communication. And when the words in the body language don't match, studies show Mm -hmm. people go with the body language before the words. One of my favorite sayings is, and and it's over and over again with people, I don't remember what he said, but I remember how he made me feel. Yes, exactly. And that's, I mean, I can uh, time and again with people. It's like, I don't remember why, but I know I don't trust him. didn't like that person. I don't remember what they said, but God, I love being around them. Yep. You know, it's that. I don't remember what they said. But it is because that's what sticks. It's not the text. Mm-hmm. It's that sense. And yeah. do people, set, like bosses, for example, if somebody yeah. that's going through the interview process, do they, even if they don't know, they're looking at the body language of somebody they're interviewing, that comes into play a lot, I would assume. That oh, if somebody absolutely. is just, they could be a great candidate, smart, know everything they need to know, but if they're throwing out bad body language signs, chances are they're going to pick up that. on it. Reverse that too. When you're going in for a job interview, and you're sitting in front of the boss and all of a sudden you're not getting a lot of confidence off of this person. You're thinking, I don't know. 
right? Oh, yeah, true. I don't know if you're really in charge. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. know if I want to work with you or for well, you. Yeah. Well, let me give you this little anecdote. So my husband's a corporate business consultant, travels all over the world and works on processes, um, bottom line, how they do their, their um, manufacturing, all of mm-hmm. that. So he went into a very large company that makes um, really popular products, but I can't say who they are. <laughs> widgets. They make like widgets. They're, they <laughs> make really popular widgets. <laughs> but they had a million square foot manufacturing facility. And the man who was in charge of this, he was the manager over the whole million square foot factory. He, every, all the employees were going, we can't stand him, you've got to get rid of him, we can't deal with him. So my husband went in and talked to him, and, or went and shadowed him, and followed him around. And he found that every time he talked to anybody, he took his hand like he was pushing down. He took his flat palm, put it out in the air, and would push down, like he was pushing That's so unnatural, down. so weird, just... It would be like, oh, well, come on. Oh, I've seen people. Like, like a I calming. Can, so like if, it's a, if somebody, there's a problem, like a calming down, yeah, like it's okay, it's we like, got it, we got it like kind of thing. back off. I'm, I've got huh. this, I've, I've got this, or stay da- stand down. But anytime you push down, yeah. it feels, okay, so try this with me. Okay. Push your hands down. Okay. So now yeah. we're, just, we're just pushing our hands down repeatedly. Yeah. Now keep the motion, but turn your palms up instantly feels lighter it, it does it does feel, that's it's weird the same movement you're a wizard just, <laughs> <laughs> that feels like instantly different she's, she's right? this close to being a rocket science she, scientist i mean she really is <laughs> this close that was weird <laughs> i mean it's like you lift yeah. your hands and it's all of a sudden it's like you, you're a balloon it's crazy you up. going like this pushing down is yes. much more work and that's what all wow. the employees were feeling from him so my husband goes into his office and he goes would you be willing to try body language and the manager immediately leans back in his chair and folds his arms. <laughs> Crosses his legs, turns <laughs> <Exactly>. sideways. <laughs> and my husband goes, I see you're not open to this. <laughs> and, he hadn't, and the manager hadn't even said anything yet. And he goes, let's just say I'm skeptical. Mm-hmm. And he goes, will you just try one thing? When you talk to people, instead of pushing down, just turn your palm up. And he goes, that's weird. And he goes, just try it. Just try it. And so he now shadowed him again. And every time he went to talk to somebody, he would start to push down and he would pause himself and he would look at my husband and he would turn his palm up and go, (laughs) like this? (laughs) And my husband's like, yep, just do that. And so he would talk like this. Yeah. By the end of that week, everybody kept coming to my husband and go, you fixed him. How did you fix this manager? It was something that little. Because they they were hearing, they were hearing what he was thinking. They were when hearing, he was doing they this. They were hearing push down, don't grow, stay yeah. put. But when you turn and you talk, so two things were happening. Wow. One was the people were getting a different lifting message, yeah. and it was also sending a new message to that manager's brain saying, oh, I should probably use more lifting language. So it, it works both ways. That's crazy. Wow. Isn't that's that really cool? cool? Yeah, wow. that's really cool. Do you ever, I have to ask, since you just flew in, and, and again, Ann Washburn is with us today on our podcast. We're recording this on July 30th, so you know, and she was in town for a presentation um, that was held. Where are you guys, where were you, where did you present on July 30th? The Hotel. That's, that's the quiet person in, from Omaha yeah, who invited Yeah, because she her. knows where I'll be tonight. I don't. <laughs> Downtown, 20th and Farnham. And we're at 160th and Center is where our studio is right now. I'll have to come back. I like, you, I really like Omaha. This, it's beautiful it's here. It's beautiful. It really is. And it's even a gray day afternoon, kind of a grayish afternoon. We're supposed to get some thunderstorms. Yeah, but, but look at all your trees. I know. Oh, isn't it great? Cow. It's it beautiful. Is. It's pretty cool. We like Omaha a lot. We really do. I think it's a lot of people fly over and they don't realize what they're missing and not dropping Well, and dropping it's, it in. was such a short flight from Utah. I had no idea. That's great. So, and, and Vicki even says she drives it in a day. So. That's awesome. Uh, so but real quick, you, real quick question. She just she just described Omaha briefly yeah. in like 10, 15 words. If you noticed, she when she said when you fly over, she took her hand and went like this, like yeah. an airplane, went like this, and she said trees, and she did all this other stuff. When somebody uses their hands as much as she does, because <laughs> she, because she, even people here, here in, here in, are, in our former life, people talked about <laughs> you using your podcast, hand all the time. And here we are with <laughs> our hands. Our hand. But like even in conversations, people have talked to you, Damon, for one of them. It's yeah. like you always use your hands. Like she'll describe, she'll take a pencil and she'll write with an imaginary pencil. Like <laughs> she just does that. Is that a? Is that something on her that she's trying? to be like I'm trying to drive the message home yeah like she thinks she's talking to dumb people 
Like, oh, wow. you, like I got to act this out or they're not going to know that flying means this. <laughs> so funny. The train, the tangents Pat goes on. I know. <laughs> Believe but, me. Well, <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> this is why you guys have so much fun. This is awesome. But there's, there's two parts to look at there that are really important. One is when I, so I, I teach a class called Break Free Intensive and for the whole, for it's a two day class and for the whole two days, all I do is I have people come up on stage and I work with them on their body language and I show them what's between them and the goals that they're trying to achieve mm. because our programming is what stops us. Not, not the world, not the excuses, not the blame, but our own programming. Mm -hmm. And so I show people how to get past that. And so when people come to that class, very often they're like, this is my favorite class ever because it's fun to watch people get past it. But right. what I watch for is when in people's body language, I watch when their words and their body language don't match. So like when she's going, doing the airplane over her head, that matches what she's talking about. What I'm looking for is when it doesn't match. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. And the other thing, the other thing that's really important there is that when, we're, um, when we talk with our hands, um, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you three things. Okay. So the second one is this. When I teach people to improve customer service, like when, people, when a company has me come in and talk to their customer service people, I tell them that even when they're on the phone, use their body language because your body language changes your it's tone true. of voice. It's true. And that's why I have, been, I have been on many podcasts and many radio interviews I've, I, all over the country. And the best radio interviewers, the best podcast interviewers use their body language because yeah. it changes your voice tone. It does. It absolutely. If you don't smile when you talk, I mean, seriously, customer service. Yep. You hear that like that. Yeah. Well, voice actors I should have, have said voice in a snap, right? Boink, could you snap that? <laughs> See, it didn't match. It didn't match. Skeptical. Like voice actors, though. If you watch the behind the scenes stuff, say on Toy Story, and and Tom Hanks yes. yep. is playing Woody, and he is all over the place in that room, using his hands, jumping up and down to yep. portray that through his to get voice. That come out. Yes. Yeah, that's. We were just talking about this the other day. Silly, silly related note, but Netflix of late has a lot of movies that are foreign, foreign films, right? And right. they're like, oh my god, the plot sounds amazing. That comes on. And everybody on it, you can tell, is speaking Spanish, and it's been dubbed over by an English-speaking actor right. who doesn't give a rat's behind. You can tell by the way they're reading yep. the script. Yeah. And it's like, this isn't matching what I'm seeing, and it's driving me crazy because well, I don't funny. hear the passion. Exactly. And you'd actually probably get more out of watching the original actor's body language and not understanding their words. Probably so. Probably yeah. so. Yeah, because it's infuriating because I'm like, that doesn't match. This is driving me crazy. That person saying those words doesn't care. And this guy's about ready to drop. He's going to jump off a building and there's not, there's no passion. Yeah, yes. I agree. Yes. I never even thought about that, made that mm -hmm. connection before. That's crazy. Um, so, gosh, wait, I got to give my third point. <laughs> oh, because oh, yeah, everybody listening is going to go, wait, what's Where's the, the third, third point? Where's the third? Yes. So the third point is that when we let ourselves use our body language, the interesting thing is when your arms, when you don't let them leave your side, mm -hmm. it actually sends a message of capacity and freedom. And what I mean by freedom is if you don't, if you have you ever seen a T-Rex talker? It's like their elbows are glued to their side yeah. and they just use these little arms right here. This sends a message that I don't have a lot of freedom up here in my own thinking. In other words, hmm. I tie myself down. It, it's usually an indicator of a lot of negative thinking going on in our head, hmm. usually directed itself. Right. I'm not good enough. People don't like me. That's interesting. I won't succeed. And we shut ourselves down with our negative thoughts. We and, hurt ourselves more than anybody else could ever hurt us. Yep. In every aspect, it yeah. seems like. Yes. Yeah. And that's what body language did for me is it set me free from the negative thoughts. Not that I never have a negative thought, mm -hmm. but I was so trapped by them that I couldn't go out in public. You recognize it now in a different way. And I know um, how to, and now I know how to get past it. That's How that's come some people, we used to talk about programming and mm -hmm. we're all programmed to, for this. How, how do we get programmed, number one, and how, are some people not programmed? Like to is it, either yeah, have that, it, throw off the negative vibe or to... Is um, it modeling? Yeah. Or is it... Not modeling. Experience. <laughs> yeah, right. Is like it, you experience something, whether good or bad, or are you copying behavior that you are growing up around? Yes and yes. Okay, doke. They're <laughs> all, of, all of it. Because the majority of our the majority of our default programming it gets put in our subconscious between the ages of zero and eleven years old. Wow. 
And that, and then we take this program from when we were like seven and we use it to make decisions in our finances as an adult. <laughs> that works really well. Yeah, right. <laughs> Or that one from when we were nine that makes decisions in our marriage as an adult. You yeah. know, that goes really well. Yeah. We, we need to be able to upgrade our thinking. Yeah. And that's where body language can be the interrupt in the program so we can install the new program. Because our computers, how I, I talked about how our subconscious behaves like our computer. Right. Our computer gets <laughs> updates all the time. That's you right. just made me think of um, Foreman, a friend of ours, his oh. computer. Quick, quick synopsis. His um, he has an um, an old Apple, a Mac laptop, mm -hmm. and it's he's never updated it. It's never been updated because it's never he knows been how changed. to use everything. And he said, and he oh, was that told like my dad, and he was told that you just don't <laughs> don't it'll, it'll keep it virus free. Don't update it. My just dad keep it. still uses Word Perfect. Is that a thing? It perfect? used to be a thing. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know where all the buttons are exactly, and it's like yeah. and all the shortcuts. I know everything here. I don't want to update this. I'll lose everything that I've I've learned, or my stuff will get put. You know, somebody's gonna move my cheese and I'm not going to know where to find it and, if they update it. And that's the equivalent of what us do yeah. as humans, as adults. It's like, oh, don't upgrade. No, 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 don't, <laughs> don't change. change anything. Yeah. It would be so much easier if we would just get a message that said, hey, your brain needs an update. Familiar is not oh. necessarily right. N exactly. Right. And, Comfortable. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. now you're opening a tangent. And, <laughs> and, and the things that we believe about ourselves are not necessarily true. We've just gathered evidence about them over time oh oh hmm. think about that for a second say that one more time so the things that we believe about ourselves are not necessarily true we've just gathered evidence for them over time selective gathering like me you don't see i the believe bad stuff. people didn't like me yeah. and that people were mean you only want to see things that confirm what you believe whether it's good or bad mm -hmm. so even if you see something that that says Oh no no that's not true. You're this. You're like oh, I don't I don't trust that. I don't that's because right. the scales haven't tipped. I have too much evidence showing me the other one, so it must be true. Your subconscious does not behave off of truth. It behaves off of what keeps you alive and what keeps you comfortable. Yeah. So if a belief or a program didn't kill you and it's comfortable, your <laughs> subconscious will defend the program. Wow, that is so true. So cr that's crazy. Isn't that so yeah. simple? That that's so the simple. other thing. It's so simple. And it's so obvious when you hear it. When yeah. you say it out, when you hear somebody say it out loud. If and I do like, something, it's comfortable and it didn't kill me. Well, I'll just keep doing that because I'm fine. Yeah. Exactly. Because obviously it's going to hurt more to change it. It's going to be harder to change. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. That's not, that's, but wow. we But we can train ourselves. We can learn to do it different. I'm evidence of that. Yeah. Because I wouldn't talk to anybody nine years ago. I've been, I've been a body language expert now for, this is my ninth year. But before that, I wouldn't even talk to people that's, at all. That's crazy. How many people do what you do? Do you think on your level or that you've, you've, you've got to have kind of a peer group? Nobody has that ever you, asked that. That's a great question. I'm just <laughs> it's, there's not a lot. Yeah. There's you see someone like national news when they have Every like after a while, like a, 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 a debate or something like that. Like, oh, let's go the body language of all the Democratic candidates or yes. something. And there's like one or two people that you see on TV all the time. Yeah. yeah. But not, you're right. There aren't very many. Yeah, they, they had me do that one year in 2012 debates. No they kidding. They had me come in as a body language expert. That's really crazy. Here's part of the problem, really quick, is that they are coached body language wise. All the, oh. the yes. anybody that's going to be on TV. Or, isn't it, uh, what's the it's word I'm orchestrated. For? Orchestrated. Mm -hmm. You have a complete routine. You know, yeah. when, you know, when your hand's going to go down and you say this word. Yes. You get a and they thumbs up on this it. word and you, yes. It's, it's very orchestrated. But the interesting thing is that most of those experts that get on TV, they're, they're not looking for how do you better yourself from your body language. So when you ask the question, how many people do what I do, it's a small handful that focus on body language being something that upgrades your own personal self. Mm -hmm. and, Instead of looking and, out. And that's the yeah, huge power in, in it. Because people are like... It well, how do I learn body language? And I'm like, start by looking at you. Yeah. But that's, people don't think of it that, that way. Right. I, until exactly. talking to you today, I never once thought of body language going the other direction. I always thought it was something that you, you know, I threw out there I and it's to, like, it's nothing that I could change from the inside that would change the way people acted yeah. towards me. It was right. the other direction. You need to watch other yep. people to watch for warning signs. To, to, for me on how to behave against them. If she's like this, I'm not going to talk to her. Yeah. If, you know, it was never the other direction. Yeah, but the cooler thing is if she's like this and you fold your arms across your chest, 
chest, there's things you can do in your body language that lower the intensity of the situation that will cause her to unfold the arms. Mm -hmm. And that's what people don't think about. That's the real yeah. cool power. When you go to talk anywhere across the country, is it primarily working like with business groups and, and things like that? Or, or um, you know, who's, who's taking advantage of the information? Smart people. Yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. So like the they, one in the corner right yes, here. Like Vicky. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Vicky has just invited Rand, not, not random. I mean, they're, well, but she's just invited everyone. It, it, Body right? yeah. language is not held to one specific category of businesses or only businesses benefit. It's anybody who's a human benefits. Mm -hmm. If you're a business owner or if you're, if you're a salesperson. Or, mm -hmm. you know, you want to know what you're putting out yeah, there. Yeah, and who's a salesperson, Jill? Right. Everyone. Everybody. Anybody that's ever tried to get right. anybody, anybody who ever tried to get their kids to do the dishes is a salesperson. <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah. Now, okay, let's talk about kids just for a second. Cause, because you said that a lot of it happens before age 11. Mm -hmm. um, are children, are they testing the waters when they're, when they're developing these programs? It's like everybody says, oh, children are so innocent. And I'm like, no, they're not. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're smart. They're, they're not. No. They they are looking for <laughs> they are smart. right. They're mm -hmm. super smart and they pick up really quick on on the the shortcuts and they 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 pick up real fast. They can smell fear and <laughs> they know when yeah. they've got you. And he's like Pat's got two kids and they're both teenagers now. Mm -hmm. But growing up, I mean, as when they were youngsters, our kids is there something that parents can do to help their kids develop better program i mean thinking of it like you're talking about it's like so, this is something that they're going to pattern for the rest of their life almost. absolutely and and unfortunately people don't like the number one answer the number one answer is we have to improve our own body language model it because yeah. Yeah. they learn more well i this is how i say it they actually learn more from how we think and feel than anything we ever tell them and so if we don't work on our own thinking and feeling mm -hmm. about ourselves we can tell them all day long, oh, no, you're amazing. And then we think about ourselves, I'm not amazing. Yeah. Then they are going to believe no. they're not amazing. One of my dad's favorite sayings, and, and it was jokingly, was don't do what I do, listen or do what I say. Yeah. Do what I say, don't do what I do. Because, you know, it's like, well, dad, you did it. You know, and you're like, no, don't do what I do, do what I say. It's like, that's, and, that's, that's not what you that, pick up on. Has that statement ever worked for nope. anybody? Ever. Nope. But yet we know it. We you know just, better. They know better. It's like, no, don't do what I do. But do we I don't say. know how to do it. Yeah. We don't know what to do. Right. And that's why I love body language because wow. it's the what to do. It's and, uh, the and how to do it. And yeah. the kids thing too. That um, You know, my, my son is actually getting a lot better now that he's older and he's got a job and all this stuff. But before he was 16, he would be terrified to go into a room with strangers. Like he wouldn't even go to a family picnic if there were people that he didn't know that were going to be there. So teaching him, getting to, to kids like that, that it, not necessarily severe social anxiety, but people that are like you, that don't like to be around other people mm -hmm. and teach them on how to present themselves into a room and don't come in like with your earbuds in and your arms <laughs> crossed and you're that, you know, walk into a room like you're not trying to scare everybody away and I think that he would have probably changed a lot sooner because the reaction to him would have been a lot different earlier on. What what age do people get driver's license in Nebraska? 16. 16? Yeah, 14 permits. And 16, 16 driver's permits. license. Yeah, Yeah, because I, I grew up in Idaho and that's a farm country and so we got our license and permit at 14. Mm -hmm. And But Utah's 16. And what I'm noticing is kids... Um, don't care as much about getting their driver's license That's as so they used to. We've talked about that m yes, numerous times. Have. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. This new phenomena happening. It's like, what the heck? I couldn't wait. Oh, right. <laughs> but it's because we needed that for connection. In yeah. order to be able to go out and connect with our friends, Good we point. had to be able to drive. They don't have to. They just get their phone out and they and they have a level of connection. But the level of connection is not a physical in the same room kind of connection. So they actually have more anxiety about being in rooms with people or interviewing for a job or um, even going into the supermarket. Like I have a 16 year old too. And he's like, why don't you go into the grocery store? And I'm like, you're 16 years old, right? You drive to the grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, no, you just get it for me on the way home. And I'm like, what is yeah. that? That's that's interesting that you say it because I never really thought about that before. Because they they do they have more connection, but it's not the same kind of connection. Exactly. And more and privacy with that connection too. Yeah. Um, more so because in the house we had the one phone. Yeah. Right. And so if you're going to talk, you're going to talk in the living room. 
Yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh God. Yeah, you're right. Because you know? right, right now, you know, <laughs> yeah. my son gets on his PC or my daughter on her Xbox or whatever. And on a Saturday night, they're all on playing. If she'd go over to a girlfriend's house or my son to a guy's, mm-hmm. I won't say boyfriend's house because he freaked <laughs> out. You know out. what you mean. <laughs> yeah. But they're, they're going to sit there with their with their gaming headsets on and play anyway. So why yeah. not? Why even leave the house? Stay at your right. house and game and play. Exactly. Yeah, you're totally that, right. I, I you have your own that. bathroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> And that's exactly what my 16 year old said. It's like, why would I leave when I have my bathroom here? Right. <laughs> and you're my fridge and all this. And, right? and also, and the, yeah. the body language coming from a parent in an awkward situation this week. And I haven't even told you this yet. I was going to save it for our podcast. But hey, we're on a podcast. This is oh, our podcast. That. Our podcast. Perfect timing. Um, so two days ago, driving, I, I live on 144th. And I was taking my daughter to her mom's on 180th. So 44 blocks ish, right? Between face, she's dating someone, kid, nice kid, great kid, like him a lot. <laughs> Super, talk about body language. This kid is like <laughs> extremely outgoing, very nice, respectful, good kid. FaceTimed Sophia while we're driving. And um, she declined it. I'm like, you can FaceTime Matthew, I don't care, that's fine. So she, all right, whatever. <laughs> she called, FaceTimes him back. He's like, what are you doing? I'm heading back to my mom's. Okay, cool. We'll just uh, FaceTime me when you're there. And she says, okay. He said, love you. She said, love you too. If you could have read my body language. <laughs> I, I told my wife, I like, I I don't remember 168 to 180th. Like I just went. You went blank? I couldn't. Because it blank? was like, I even reliving that now, I have goosebumps. Go cold. Because it was like, <gasps> I didn't know what to say. I'm like, don't freak out. <laughs> But don't under freak out. Don't over middle freak out. Just don't say anything. Just shut up. Just keep going. Let's go to McDonald's. We went to McDonald's. I went to get gas. I went to Hy-Vee. To you get want a happy meal? Let's go. What do you want? Like I didn't know what to do. So like in that in that moment, that. middle freak out. Right? Middle freak out. <laughs> in that moment, my body language to her. I'm sure she was look because she had never said that around me. Right. I think she noticed the cold sweat. I'm sure. Does she how, have a cold sweat? No, though? but, but she I said I, it. I how fought old is through she? it. 14. Oh wow. And I yeah. fought through it. I'm like, and like we get up a little bit farther. I'm like, so uh, you. Were, <laughs> and I even said, you want to get some McDonald's or something before I take you back to mom? She goes, sure. And I, because div- I didn't want to say anything about it. Right. So body language from a parent to a kid in that circumstance <laughs> could completely turn around either good behavior or reinforce or turn around bad behavior, reinforce good behavior. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and, and and the one real problem is that just because we pay attention to body language doesn't mean we become mind readers or fortune tellers, Yeah. which would really be nice because be awesome. to be yes, able to know, would. if only the body language would tell me exactly what to say in this moment, then I will say it. To the yeah. But the thing that we have to do though, though, is calm down because nothing that we say with emotion is going to help the situation with 100%. a teenager. Absolutely. And that's where body language can help because we can slow slow our breathing down. And here's what I'll tell you, Pat, is that when we get agitated or emotion gets added, body language always speeds up and gets choppy. So when we remind ourselves to have slow, complete gestures, that's Mm -hmm. because body language has been a decade long research for me. And I, not everybody has a decade that they're going to put into body language, right? But little pieces that you can look at are things like Slow your breathing down, slow the gestures, don't go choppy on them, and complete gestures. Because choppy is going to feel like you're on, next on the chopping block. Mm-hmm. Or the, yeah, I, I call oh, them yeah. the parent weapons. Because there's the pokey pokey, choppy choppy, punchy punchy. These are the choppy gestures that come in when too much emotion gets added. Yeah, Can't you just see that? I mean, the pointed finger and point 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 and yes just like, mm, 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 and you've seen it happen a thousand times yep. whether it's in a grocery store or the mall yep. on the street and the same way like you said the chopping into your hand yeah to do because yes. you're trying you're to like drive oh. home a yes. point you know and and you can see it happening and it's isn't it funny that it's the same gesture everybody goes to mm-hmm. that, that's that, why you can tell when the emotion is there because the the body yeah. language gets choppy and fast that's and incredible. so slow the gestures That's down crazy. and do a complete. And when I say complete, I mean like a circle instead of a chop. chop. Just like we use exclamation marks at the yeah. end of a yeah. sentence. That's a very choppy kind of a gesture. Yeah, that's awesome. Something to think so that's, about. that's something that any everybody right now could do. Just if you're in a situation like that, just calm yep. down, slow the gestures down, slow everything because, down. Yeah, and, just and that's calm interesting because yeah, when people do get really, really mad about something and they they they're, they immediately want to make a response about it, yeah. it's like no, you need to stop because what your body's saying may not be the message you're trying to deliver. 
and that's what or they're going that you're to you're choosing right you need to slow down so you can choose the message instead right. of it goes by default yeah so basically three things we've talked about wow. i would suggest that people put into practice is that when you start to feel extra tired and worn out and low energy pay attention have you gone into that afternoon slump and pull your body language back up not just shoulders. it's not just lack of caffeine it's not just a sugar slump no <laughs> people just do it yeah you just gotta sit up yes and and, and you can add yeah. those other things but sugar crashes sugar those crash. are not my favorite yeah. so anyway so i would yeah. suggest that one the second one is like we just talked about when you feel a lot of emotions slow the gestures down do rounded complete gestures and the third one is when somebody gives you a compliment then instead of pushing it away let yourself receive it and to receive you can even imagine scooping it up in front of you and bringing it towards your heart instead mm -hmm. of pushing it away from you so when you say that's, thank you, it's bring funny, it in. That's that same motion that you're talking about with your husband. Exactly. That's Instead of push, push down, down, it's raised Because you're almost up. rejecting it when you do that to someone. Somebody says, God, that's really, really great looking shirt. You got to oh, stop. You know, it's like yeah. you're dismissing them. Yeah. Instead of thank you. I yes. appreciate that. Exactly. And, yeah. And I guess yeah. there was there was actually a fourth one. And that is avoid the parent weapons of pokey, pokey, <laughs> punchy, punchy, <laughs> choppy, choppy. <laughs> avoid those. Are those trademarked? Pokey, pokey, um, I punchy, should, punchy, right? Avoid the pokey, pokey, punchy, punchy. Yes. <laughs> yes. I like that. <laughs> you should trademark them. This is great. This is great. This has been really fun. Yeah. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to come in and talk to us. I know, and I, I've known you for a whole half hour. Now. Right? That's right. Awesome. The funny part is, is I wanted to say real quick, is when you first got here uh, and you flew in and you get picked up at the airport. Yes. And what, what was the conversation that you guys had? The conversation was, here's the address where I need to go. And she goes, oh, what's that for? And I'm like, well, the podcast. And she's like, what podcast? And I'm like, the one you set up? <laughs> she goes, I didn't set up a podcast. And I'm like, oh. Hmm. So she's like, well, let's go there and see what this is all about. <laughs> you don't know what we're walking into. But let's do it. And as it turns out, you do know who Pat and JT were. Yep. Right? And are. But it's just not on the radio. Now it's on a podcast. I didn't know your face. Nope, not at all. We've done a really good job hiding those. Yeah, we have. <laughs> I love it. I love but it. this is great, and it's been really awesome to talk to you. Yeah, I um, love this. And I, I, I wish we could have, um, and next time maybe we can, if you ever come back to Omaha, we can get a chance to talk to you before you're going to be in town and oh, let yeah. everybody know about the event so they can come out and see you. This, this time it happened a few days ago. It was on July 30th. Where can they find you online? online? Facebook, et cetera. You um, bet. So if they just look me up on Facebook, Ann Washburn Fan is my public page. Ann Washburn Fan, all one word. And Ann is A-N-N, -N, no E. And then 3keyelements.com. So the number 3, keyelements.com, that's the company that I train for and the education company and They're all the classes nice that we They're super nice, too. Have. Yeah. Um, the conversations that I had back and forth were awesome. And oh, yeah. We they have were, yeah. some amazing people yeah. that work for us. I could just really see great. you coming and, and not only talking to companies, to, to businesses, to groups. Schools. But to schools would be, yeah. a, would be a have huge Have you been like thing. high schools? Oh, oh yeah. wouldn't that be great? Like high schools? Because I could colleges, see them at the beginning that? being okay. shut down, like especially high schoolers or middle schools. Middle like, the school. kids are like, this is dumb. Eh. But at the end of it, <laughs> they're like, they, they would... They could, remember. They would remember it. Yeah. Well, and what I like even more is just going to the faculty meeting and teaching the teachers. Yeah. Yeah. Because the teachers can have teach a, the kids. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. That's awesome. That's great. And That's I really and great. I love the testimonials I get from teachers who have implemented this kind of thing in their classrooms and the difference that it's made in the kids. Because like we'll mm -hmm. have some teachers that will they'll go in in the beginning of the day they'll have their kids stand up and use good body language and put their shoulders back and then they'll say a positive affirmation to start their day because just think about it small you, thing yeah you, you have kids you have kids no so I have kids you have kids Pat not every morning before they went to school was everything roses and <laughs> rainbows no I don't remember a rose or a rainbow <laughs> hardly ever and so it's like it's always somebody's yelling somebody's upset hurry up get this done that didn't happen right that's i can't what, find my books that's what we shoot. exactly oh. that's what we send them to school with and so when the when the teachers take a moment to help give a positive beginning to that day kind it, of realign them yes my bit. mom my mom yeah. taught kindergarten uh -huh. and so i learned i learned some of these things from her when i was little because everybody wanted her to be their kindergarten teacher of their kid and I'm like, why? 
And she told me when she goes, it's because I create an atmosphere of love and acceptance where the kids feel safe to learn. You know what's interesting you say that? It makes me just flash real quick to the, my favorite teachers. Yeah. I never thought about why. Because it's like I don't remember, again, exactly what they said, but I know how they made me feel. Exactly. Um, and those teachers, they didn't do anything. It wasn't magic. But it was like you loved walking in that classroom. Right. Because you knew... You, you just knew it was going to be. You, you didn't even walk. know. It was, I'm safe to learn here. You no, just, you just knew yeah, that it I was. Never it was that. that environment was just. It just. You just it, liked it. You just liked yeah. it. You wanted to hang in that. Yeah. You wanted to stay for an extra class. You know. Yeah. You wanted to go check with them after school. You'd love to run into them in town. You know that kind of stuff. And that's crazy. Yeah. Wow. And so when they can even just start the day differently, it makes a whole difference in the learning. Because otherwise, the kids are spending an hour or two still trying to process the negative things that happened yeah. before they even got to school. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That wow. really is cool. Well, gosh, I, I hope that you get to come back again. And I yeah. hope that um, organizations, schools in particular, and if anybody needs any information, again, how to, to reach you, it's on our Facebook page. Um, we'll have it on all of our social media or just contact us. Yeah. Um, we'll be sure to put you all in touch. Yeah, for thank sure. you so much for taking some time out of your afternoon before your presentation this, this evening. You are welcome. Um, this it was is a fun. pleasure to meet both of you. It's great to meet you, you too. too man. Thanks. So, okay, so so if you're just you know body language wise, what what, <laughs> what what are you what are you picking up here between us? So how much time are we going to go? For? <laughs> 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 and that's why we didn't videotape that's this. right <laughs> cameras unplugged cameras unplugged okay we're good <laughs> excellent uh, i want to thank kugler vision for being a supporter of our podcast um they've been with us oh my gosh i mean I, honestly we started in february and they were with us not long after that and they've been on board ever since and i'm i, I can't yeah we express appreciate how so much, much we appreciate it if you're thinking about getting rid of the contacts or the glasses and you want somebody that you can trust and and you want a recommendation we would recommend them and, and i think this is a great place to start is on their website at kuglervision.com there's a ton of information on there click on the procedures you'll see a consultation button and it will ask you how you heard about Kugler Vision. That's when we want you to say Pat and JT podcast. We would appreciate it. They would appreciate it. Very much. But get rid of the glasses. Get rid of the contacts. You may be able to do a same day procedure. Wouldn't that be phenomenal? Yes. Kuglervision.com. Want to know where to listen to our podcast? Go to patandjt.com. Pat and JT podcast. A Parkville Media Production.